Hello everyone, welcome to another robotic cleaning appliance unboxing and first look. So this is the first ever robotic vacuum cleaner I've unboxed on my channel. You may remember I unboxed the iRobot Scuba, but that's a hard floor washer. This is actually a vacuum cleaner designed for carpets and hard floors. It's made by the company Vileda, who are more famous for their mops and other cleaning products and this is sort of a budget priced machine retailing approximately £150 on average but if you shop around you can get it cheaper I think I picked this up for about 110 so without any further ado let's unbox the uh, Vileda Robot VR101 and uh, see what it's like okay very bright packaging in uh, Vileda red and blue so oh, according to the box it's got two cleaning patterns. It's got the spiral mode where it starts off in the middle of the room and rotates, but it also has a, well, it says meander, moves with meander concept, which basically means it goes back and forth across a room. So it does both of those. And it's actually a lithium iron battery. So that's good because they tend to be quicker to charge lithium iron than the traditional NICAD type batteries. I've seen quite a few reviews and demos of this on YouTube, but most of them seem to be in a foreign language. So this is obviously available in other parts of the world, in Europe. Well, let's, before I take the machine out, let's have a look at this. Got a spare filter. Not sure if they're washable. You might be able to rinse that through. I'll have to check the instructions. Of course, the charging adapter. Now, being a budget-priced robot, you don't get all the fancy features you do with some of the more expensive ones. And one of the most um, useful features that this doesn't have is a self-charging dock. So basically, when this is finished its program, it'll just stop wherever it needs to, which could involve it stopping under some furniture and you have to retrieve it. But with the machines that have the self-charging dock in theory, providing they manage to find the dock every time, once the battery depletes or they've finished the cleaning cycle, they will search for the dock, dock themselves in and charge up ready for the next time. But you can't expect that at this price point. Two sets of instruction books in here, obviously with lots of different languages. It's fairly simple by the looks of it. I've had a look at uh, the official by leader video on YouTube. Quite light. Oh, does feel quite plasticky. Obviously it's made of plastic, but there's plastic and there's plastic and this feels plastic. Right. Well, the bottom part which is a part that's going to get a lot of the wear. That does seem quite a tough plastic, to be honest. Mm, fairly soft brushes, though. Now, this one doesn't have any side spinning brushes. Like on the Roomba, you have one side spinning brush. On some models, you have two. And often on machines of this type, the brush is in the middle here, about here, and you'd have two side sweep brushes that are supposed to direct debris from the sides into the main cleaning path. This doesn't have that, all this has is two sort of brush strips either side. But the advantage of this one, and I quite liked the idea of this, the actual brush, the rotating brush, is a lot wider than some robotic vacuums. In fact, it's probably about a third wider than some. So it is not going to clean right to the edge, obviously, but, you know, that's a, a, that's a fair width it's going to clean. This, I believe, is a suction channel for fine debris. You've got a little wheel there. You've got two wheels here that drive the robot. They're sprung loaded. And you've also got a little velour strip, which will help prevent particles being flung back, I expect. Now, you can actually remove the brush. Now, you need a little um, a coin or a screwdriver but you can take this little panel off here and take the brush out for cleaning, which is good. You've got the bumper at the front, so obviously when it senses furniture, when it bumps into furniture or the wall, it'll change direction. 
You'd certainly notice that on your carpet anyway, it's, it's very bright. You've got two programs, I believe. One is for the single dot, I think it's for a smaller room. The double dot is for a larger area. I'll be showing you all this when I do a demo. Now under here, under the very plasticky feeling cover, we have a little cleaning tool, which you can use to clean the brushes, I expect, and possibly the filter. You get a soft brush that side, soft brush there, and you've got this sort of thing, which I suppose you could get, uh, you could clean the brushes with that. But that lives on board, so that's handy, so you, as long as you put it back, you don't lose it. Here's the waste disposal container. Quite small by the looks of it. Press here, it says. So it's going to be stiff because it's new. It's not going to fly open, is it? No. Yeah, it is pretty small. I'm not really sure where the dirt goes, actually. It's a bit difficult to see where the actual dirt goes. Where does it empty out of? Not sure. Well, the suction, the dirt, where does the dirt go into? Well, I think the dirt actually enters the container through this here. I don't think the suction is going to be great on this machine. And at the top, well, that's hinged. That is where we've got the filter. So as I say, there is a spare supplied. I think there's a mesh there and then there's a filter under that. I think that will be rinsable. I'll check the instructions before the end of the video and I'll tell you if they are. So I think it does have some suction, but it's mainly, I think, more, more of a sweeper. But there is some suction in this, so that fits in quite nicely. I quite like the top bin emptying. My original Roombas I have, and, and most Roombas I think now have a bin at the back and you have to pull it out at the back, but I quite like being able to lift it out at the top. I think that's come open. Make sure that's in properly. And let's pop the lid back on. There's a little thing over the on-off switch. Let's take that off. And I think, it, I don't know if it's got any charge, we'll soon see. But all we've got on the back here is a little on-off. Well, when I've turned it on, the lights have illuminated. And you've also got your port there to plug in your charger. Now I don't know if it's going to actually move. Let's try it, shall we? It's going to bump into my tripod in a minute. I wasn't really expecting it to work out of the box. It's very quiet. Where's it gone? Yeah, I think it's going to need a full charge. Yeah, it seems a bit sluggish. I hope that's not how it's going to be all the time. Right, let's fetch it back. <laughs> There's no carry handle on this, which is a, a bit of a shame. You just, you just have to pick it up like that, because if you try picking up from that, obviously it's going to remove the top of it. Assuming it won't work if I... I try and turn it on now it'll only work when it's actually on the carpet so what I'll do I'll charge it up fully let's just check first actually before I do we'll check how long it takes to charge but if that is the noise level of it I'd be quite pleased but I'm not sure if that's that noisy because although it is a lithium-ion battery so it shouldn't reduce in performance as the battery depletes but all in all, it's, uh, it's pretty good for the money, really, if you don't want to fork out a lot of money. And I kind of like the more square shape. It seems more logical. I mean, most robot vacuums, of course, are round, and it doesn't really make sense, because your rooms are square on the whole, aren't they? Square or oblong. So why have a round cleaner? Yes, I know they, they have the side brushes, but um, it's why I quite like Neato 
because they're this sort of square shape but apparently according to a recent witch magazine survey Neato's don't clean very well they haven't tested this particular one I don't think they might have had a first look at it so two LEDs blinking in red I mean the battery's low but they are Right, well it says, I mean I don't know if it's charged, it says if they're blinking, as they are now, the two LEDs, it means the robot is ready to use. But I will pop the charger in just to make sure. The filter, you can brush off dirt of the mesh filter with a cleaning brush, and you can rinse it under slow running water to clean. Let dry before reinserting into the housing. Obviously it'll have cliff sensors on this, so if it's cleaning your landing, it shouldn't fall down the stairs. But I'll try that out in my video. So this is for carpets and hard floors, but it's basically for short pile carpets, such as the carpet I'm kneeling on now, sitting on now. If it's too long a pile, I think this machine will struggle. Um, let's just check before I put it into charge. Let me just see. It says charge the battery for four hours before initial use. So that's what I'm going to do. So uh, I'll be back, well, in a blink of an eye, and I'll put a little bit of dirt down, and we'll give this Vileader robot a quick test. So I've plugged the Vileader VR101 into the mains, and indicated by two red lights on the panel, that shows that it's charging. When those two LED lights turn green, it means it's fully charged, but if you see two LED lights alternating red and green, it means the robot needs repair. Well folks, it's four hours later, and the lithium-ion battery inside this Vileda robotic vacuum is fully charged. So I'm going to just do a very small area. I'm going to put down a bit of dirt just to give it an initial test. But uh, I'll be spreading its wings, so to speak, in a later video and giving it a bigger room to clean. But we'll just see how it copes with some tea leaves and some uh, red sand. So when I turn the cleaner on, it should start the spiral pattern of cleaning. Um, because I'm restricting it to a smaller area, I'm not sure if it'll start doing the up and down movement it's supposed to do. But um, I've concentrated most of the dirt in this area, so let's see how it does. I'll press the small room button and uh, we'll see how it picks this up. So as you can see it's going quite slowly and it is pretty quiet. It's certainly quieter than the previous iRobot robotic vacuums I've owned. It's not doing a bad job at all. The next time round it's going to hit an object, so it will start going off in a different direction, I think. So I suppose it's good that it's going slower, because it means it's being a bit more thorough. Right, so it's hit an object. So now it's tootling off. It'll go out of shot for a minute. Oh, let's find some more dirt. I thought it was going to go straight under the chair, but no, it's not. Just pick my camera up actually, and we'll follow it. So you see, it's not doing a bad job at all. It's got a very low profile, so it should go under all my furniture. Uh, under my chair there, it will, it will fit under. Seems to sort of slow down and struggle a bit at times. It's only a very low pile carpet here it's following the wall now I wonder if it's going to keep following it no
doing a slow manoeuvre. As I say, I must, I'm quite impressed by how quiet... Oops, there you go, you can't see it. How quiet it is. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to film the whole thing. I might speed it up, actually. But I'm pretty sure it will get to everything in this area. There's still that bit there. Let's hope it doesn't get stuck. Right, okay, come on, out of the corner. It's going to stand here, I don't want it going. It's going to hit my tripod. Oh, it's found that bit, look. Oh. See, unlike some of the more expensive robotic vacuums that have a dirt detect feature, don't get caught on that. When you buy a robotic vacuum, you've got to make your home robotic vacuum cleaner safe which means making sure you've got all cables out of the way, anything that the robot can get caught on. You'll find you watch it quite a bit when, it, when it's a novelty, when it's new. But I suppose it's a good thing to watch it because then you'll see areas where it will get trapped and you'll be able to do something about it. Now I don't want you going here so I'll just stop it. As you can hear, it does seem to struggle at times. Oh. Come on, there's all that to clean up yet. Still got that. It keeps missing that. <laughs> yes, it's clean enough under my tripod, thank you. It is rather frustrating to watch this, actually. It's a bit slow. But like I said, they're not designed really to be watched. Really, I could be out sitting in the sunshine or having a nap upstairs and leaving it to do its work. You hear little bits going up. So I think we've seen about enough. <clears throat> you get the general gist. I will, as I say, I'll be doing a proper demo. When I've got the room cleared, I'll, I'll do a time lapse. I'll speed it up. I'll put some dirt down everywhere, under the sofa, under the chairs. Leave the Vileda robot vacuum to do its stuff, and then we'll have a look afterwards and see if it's picked everything up. But it is, <laughs> it's a bit frustrating to watch. So. I think we'll stop it for now.
we'll just pop it over this bit here and finish the video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this robotic vacuum cleaner, please ask in the comments section below. And as I said, I'll be back with another video and I'll test it on hard floors as well. Bye for now.